This video is sponsored by Authentic Blades. Barbecue season is officially here and we all know what a truly great barbecue really is about. You guessed it, the right sauce. And before you go for store-bought barbecue sauce or even ketchup, please hear me out. There is this whole category of sauces I like to call chunky sauces. The name kind of speaks for itself. On top of great flavor, they also add a chunky texture and that is their secret weapon. And so today I want to show you three of those chunky Chunky sauces, all very different in technique, but equally delicious. First is a classic pico de gallo, barely a sauce really, and the chunkiest of them all for sure. Then we'll do a sweet pickle relish, which is somewhere between a salad and a jam if you ask me. And finally, chimichurri, your number one companion for a juicy steak and so much more. For all three sauces, you're gonna need one thing though, and that is a reliable and comfortable kitchen knife. Because as you might have guessed, there's a lot of chopping. Do you wanna see mine? Let me show you. So this is my home and this, has been my go-to knife for about a decade. Even before I started this channel, I had this knife, which is why I'm super happy to have teamed up with the company behind it, Authentic Blades. They bring you these beautiful carbon steel knives straight from Vietnam at affordable prices. All of their products are handcrafted by small family-owned businesses and I just love their look with the natural patina that builds up over time and just the way they feel in my hand. Today I'll be making all the recipes with these two knives from their Vi series, just two different sizes, 23 and 20 centimeters. And trust me, after so many years, this is a fantastic all-rounder. And now let's make some chunky sauces, shall we? Let's begin by making a classic pico de gallo. If you've ever had Mexican food, you probably had this before, but don't call it salsa. Those are often cooked, but a pico nope. never is. The first key ingredient is tomatoes, but you wanna be sure to get a variety that is lower in moisture and has a bit more meat to it. A beefsteak tomato is usually a good choice, but personally, my favorite are these plum tomatoes. What you wanna do is trim off the root end first, then cut your tomatoes into planks, cut those into batons, and then finally dice them up. A finer dice will usually result in a more pleasant texture, but don't worry about it too much. Now, it's really important to pre-salt your tomatoes. Not only will this dramatically increase their flavor, it will also start drawing out moisture. So hit them with a sprinkle, mix them up well, and set aside while we prep all the other ingredients. One ingredient you don't wanna miss out on here is onion. Try to go for a sweet white onion. They taste best eaten raw if you ask me. And in terms of cutting, we're gonna keep it tradish using the good old cross cutting technique. Now notice how there is a little bit of dark color appearing here. That is very normal for a carbon steel knife, especially a new one when you cut alliums or acidic things and it is completely safe. Then for some heat, we wanna chop up some jalapeno or serrano chilies, but be smart, wear protective gloves. Unless you wanna cry tears of regret. I like cutting my peppers in half, then de-seeding them before dicing them finely so we get more flavor and a bit less heat. Another great tip for a better pico de gallo is to quick pickle your jalapenos and onions. Simply add the juice of a lime, mix well, and set aside for 15 to 20 minutes, after which your quick pickles and your quick brined tomatoes will be ready to use. What you wanna do now is strain everything. Do you see how much liquid the tomatoes are releasing here? Exactly, all that tomato or lime juice would have ended up in the bottom of your pico de gallo bowl. And if there's one thing I don't like, it's a soupy pico, no thanks. Now we can at last combine the red and the white, add a little bit of lime zest, and if you wanna be bougie, add a little bit of fresh cilantro, which I quickly chopped up while the veggies were marinating. Give everything a quick stir, season to taste if needed, and your pico de gallo is ready to enjoy. Here it is, our pico de gallo, and I think it's time to taste it. The medium I'm gonna be tasting these with is chickpea lentil nachos. Don't judge, okay, don't judge. This has been sitting in the fridge for an hour, I would say. You can really tell all the flavors have kind of meshed together, so now it's like one cohesive sauce. Now let's put a teaspoon or so on this nacho. I mean, it's just a try, right? It's honestly beautiful. It's got that freshness from the onions and the cilantro. It's got a little bit of acidity from the lime juice and the tomatoes and just that little bit of heat you need from the jalapeno. What do you want more? This is perfect. One more super important thing is because we've sort of almost quick pickled the onions, they have lost a lot of their like nasty sharpness and you just get like the good part of the onion flavor, if that makes any sense. Next up, the one, the only sweet pickle relish, which is one weird sauce, by the way. We're starting with a whole bunch of 
cucumbers. Pickling cucumbers are perfect, but other types of cucumbers will certainly work as well. Trim off the ends first, then I like to half my cucumbers lengthwise, cut each half into a few long planks and finally dice those up. Then another onion, same as before, and very crucially, a few stalks of celery. For me, they really add a certain something to relishes and they are quite conveniently shaped for dicing. So, you know, why not? Sprinkle these generously with salt and set aside while preparing your seasoning base. For that, you wanna whip out a large saucepan and in that, combine sugar, flour, mustard seeds, caraway seeds, dried ginger, turmeric for color, and then whisk everything together before adding a good amount of apple cider vinegar and bringing everything to a simmer over medium high heat. I had to switch stoves because I ran out of gas by the way, yeah, never mind. Take your cucumber mixture, which should have softened considerably by now because of the salt, and you wanna wrap it in a large cheesecloth or kitchen towel to completely squeeze out the moisture before transferring to our sugar brine. I got admit this actually looked intriguingly delicious and at the same time smelled well, very confusing. So we're just gonna let this simmer for 15 minutes before passing any judgment. The radish will sadly lose its pretty green color, which was to be expected, and the texture will be quite thin at this point, almost a bit watery, but don't let that throw you off. You wanna transfer everything to a sealable container and let it rest and set in the fridge at least overnight or even up to three days. Don't worry, it's gonna last you for at least 10 days total. So check this out, the sweet pickle relish has been in the fridge for quite a while. I actually made this particular batch three days ago and it really does thicken up considerably. So don't worry if you feel like your relish is a little bit too liquidy at first. Let's get a taste of this. Of course, normally you would eat a sweet pickle relish with, you know, something like a hot dog, only a hot dog. Is there anything else you eat sweet pickle relish with? I'm, I'm sure it tastes great with a lot of things. Let's find out. I see this going very well with a hot dog. It's very sweet, it's a little acidic, just very like flavorful. And it also makes me wonder what other types of sweet relishes can you make? I'm sure this is not the only one, right? Now, last but not least, let us make one of the best sauces in the world, chimichurri. There are few things that require so little ingredients and work, but taste so good. Our hero ingredient for this chopped sauce is of course, parsley. You wanna discard the tough stems and then chop up the leaves and finer little twigs. I also like adding a bit of cilantro, but that's a different beast. The tender cilantro stems actually have just as much flavor as the leaves themselves, maybe even more. Then after a rough chop, you wanna use a knife with a nicely curved blade like this one and just rock it back and forth while carefully supporting the top of the blade with your weak hand. This will get your herbs nice and fine and in the meantime we are ready to finally dice a shallot. No big surprises here. But then there is this little clove of garlic and this one we really want to get as fine as possible. Crush the clove first then to chop it up as much as we can and then sprinkle with a bit of salt and most importantly here's the trick crush and press the garlic against the cutting board with the blade of your knife to turn your garlic into something between a very fine mince and a paste. Lastly, there is an optional little red chili. You could also just use chili flakes instead, but I do prefer the mild fruity kick you get alongside the spiciness when you go for fresh. But do make sure everything is nice and fine. And there is not that much left to do now. Simply add dried oregano, a very generous amount of olive oil, and traditionally some red wine vinegar. Apple vinegar works as well, of course. Then just mix everything and season with salt and pepper to taste. Adjust the amount of oil if you like. It shouldn't completely be swimming in it, but a very smooth chimichurri hasn't hurt anyone either. And last but not least, it's just so herby and beautiful. I don't know, I can't describe it, but it's good. There's not that much to say about this one, except absolutely number one best thing to eat this with is beefsteak. However, I didn't wanna make a steak just to show you guys that you can put this on steak. So, my chickpea nacho it is. Oh. Yes, it tastes incredible. And this has only been sitting around for maybe like a couple of hours tops, I would say. Maybe it tastes so good because this is the only sauce that actually has considerable amounts of fat. But like all that olive oil has actually really beautifully absorbed the flavors from the onions, the garlic, the parsley, even the cilantro. This on steak is something you don't wanna miss out on. 
I hope you learned something about the magical world of chunky sauces today and how important a knife is as your one go-to tool to make them. So let me recommend the sponsor of this video to you again, Authentic Blades. Their Vi series has been my trusted kitchen companion for almost a decade now. I mean, the one I have at home, not this one yet, but it still works like a charm. The carbon steel these knives are made of makes them super easy to sharpen and in my world, that is fantastic news. If you haven't used carbon steel knives before, it's definitely worth trying and this is a good one to start with. And maybe the best news is, aside from the Vi series, Authentic Blades offers over a dozen other great models in all sorts of shapes and sizes, as well as whetstones designed specifically for their products. I'm gonna link their online shop in the description of this video so you can go check it out for yourself and if you use the coupon code ANDONG2022 you are gonna get 10% off and considering their knives are already like seriously affordable this is honestly a steal. Also if you happen to be on a farmer's market, city fair or medieval festival in Germany they do sell them there so keep your eyes peeled but you know if you ask me the online shop link below is probably gonna be your best bet. They also make fantastic presents for that special cooking nerd in your life. You know, just saying. Thank you Authentic Blades for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one.